This is a Helia reciprocating air pump, and it's basically it's a plunger inside that uh, acts as an air uh, compressor. So I'm just going to plug it in. And it does put out quite a modest flow of air. It's quite high pressure output, but not super high pressure, and it's quite a high flow rate. So I'm just going to unplug that again. Not super noisy, but it's, it makes a modest noise um, of the reciprocating piston. So um, the specifications in this say that it's rated 25 watts and it has an output of 45 litres a minute. Um, but the pressure, as I say, isn't high. But th the reason I've, I've got this out in the first place is some friends were discussing um, its use in uh, gas burner applications where it's used to supply, supply forced air for um, gas burning jets for glass working. So um, let's open it. This nozzle screws off the front. Then you get the front diaphragm plate. When I bought this, uh, the, in the advertising blurb they made a big thing about super high tolerance ceramic pistons. So uh, that will be quite interesting to see. So this is the front plate for the air outlet. Uh, let's take a look at this then. Can I get that out? Can I prise it out? Am I going to break it? Hmm. Sure, the best way to get that out is it actually held in by. No, it's not. It's held in by just friction and rubber. Okay, so there's one of the one way valves. It's basically a rubber flap. I'll take this off, in fact. It's a rubber flap held in place by this pressure plate. And when the air is flowing, because it's uh, pushing out this way, when the air is flowing in that direction, it just pushes this this rubber flap out the way, and then when uh, it the cylinder goes in another direction, it pulls it back in again. So that's that's fairly simple. So that's one of the one-way valves. Uh, Here's the plunger. Let's uh, power it up and see just how forceful it is. Oh, that's quite forceful. Oh, and there's the other uh, one-way valve. Does this come out? Ooh. Ooh, springs. Uh, so here's the ceramic coating on the cylinder. And there's the actual uh, cylinder it goes in. So this is the plunger. Um, and another ceramic coating at the back, maybe just being used as a... I don't know if that's part of a valve or if that's just... Uh, I think that's just to provide smooth and machined sort of a... a you know, a good long life uh, reciprocating bearing. So this uh, is the thing where they said a high tolerance. And it is. It's modestly high tolerance. There's a little bit of play in it. But that's the fit fit in there is what's actually um, creating the um, air seal effectively. And it's not a complete air seal, but it's good enough that it's going to still move a good volume of air. So once again, it's got one of these little discs in it and the rubber flap, so that as the cylinder goes back the way, um, air can flow in, and then when it pushes forward, um, the flap closes and it pushes the air out past this other valve. OK, that's quite an odd little thing. right here. let's... Uh, Take the other end off. This is the air inlet, and it's notable it's got a hose barb on it. I don't think it's really designed for drawing vacuums or anything like that. 
Oh, there's a thing. That stops that from really hitting that plate quite hard. Ah, this hole in this is a uh, slightly smaller than the cylinder, so uh, the uh, ram. So if the ram, when the ram returns, it hits this as a rubber pad. Okay, so I've taken the end off, and I've just. Oh, that no, it's still on it. So this is a rudimentary filter in it, just a bit of foam, just really anti-fluff and grit really. I guess you could put more filtering on the input if you wanted, or even bring air from an external source. So that's quite useful that you can do that with that barb there. I thought this hole was the air inlet, but I'm guessing these little holes at the side are the air inlets, because that's threaded, that was what this uh, cover was screwed onto, so let's get this off. This is quite a robust plate at the back. And it's got a ball bearing in it. And that mates, is this captive? No it's not, it's just held in by grease. Wonder why that is. Yeah. Oh, it's probably just to give it a wee bit of play. But also the ball bearing will be very, very hard and it will be kind of self-centering as well. Okay, that will prevent wear on the end of the spring and mounting. Okay, that's quite interesting. And that leaves the pump itself. I can see a, a double coil arrangement. It looks a bit like a synchronous motor. With the cores that you'd think was a synchronous motor, I also see a diode. Let's open this up. I looked out the required tool just because I had a feeling I'm going to end up opening this up. Horrible screwdriver. This is a cheap DIY type screwdriver with a plastic ratchet. And plastic ratchets don't last very long with people like me. The first time you actually use it in force, it makes loud crunching, plasticky noises and disintegrates. Why they'd even consider putting such a weak mechanism in, I don't know. I got this screwdriver for all the bits that came with it, I think, or probably as an emergency screwdriver when I would desperately need one and didn't have one handy. Oh yeah, that screwdriver is not happy. It's notable that uh, though this, body, this pump is a metal body, it's only got uh, two core flex going to it. Never really trust Chinese stuff, but let's uh, assess that when it's open to see if we think it's uh, insulated well enough not to be earthed. The metal core well, it doesn't really touch the, the motor itself, but it is physically connected by the end onto the body, so mm, to me that's part of the motor effectively. Okay, that's interesting. Right. So two windings, uh, common core going through them and then it's uh, going to the middle like that. Uh, and this, I'm guessing, probably just sits in front of that because its default resting position is against the front. So when it's energised, it must pull that in to the middle like a solenoid and then release it again. So it'll be cycling like this. 
Well, it must be quite a close tolerance because it's, a, it's not a really a lot of space in there and it doesn't make contact uh, when it's running. It's quite smooth. I'm guessing that must mean this is steel, but the outer bits, well, it certainly looks like it's an alloy, like an aluminium alloy, but that's the steel ring that's effectively the plunger. As I say, it's got a diode there. It's, uh, the two windings are connected in series, live on one side, uh, going through this winding, through the diode, and then uh, back to neutral through the other winding. And um, the diode means it'll op only operating on half of the waveform, which gives it this sort of distinctive pulsing action, much like uh, the little uh, liquid pumps used in smoke machines and uh, snow machines and stuff like that. So it's quite interesting. It's very simple. Um, and I guess that really this is just a bearing. Yeah, it is. It's just being used as a sort of ser smooth ceramic hard-wearing bearing. I don't know what this is, if it's Teflon or something like that. I'm not really sure. But yeah, very simple. Uh, not really a huge amount to go wrong with that. I think I would actually prefer it. Uh, if these this burnt out in any way, there's a risk that, you know, the plastic could melt or whatever, so I'd rather the thing was earth. But, you know, if I was using it in a serious application, I would just put a earth stud onto the housing. But yeah, this is quite interesting. Yeah.